Okay, got our little key fob. One thing that's really different is these shelves. They're like a plasticky material, but it seems sturdy enough. Also, it's really nice that there's two sets. In the normal cargo vans, there's only one set. In the back here, the shelves actually fold up and down. So like I have the dolly right there. I can just fold up the shelf and that's plenty of room. This step is awesome. It's super grippy. All right, we're loaded up and ready to go. I have a weird route today, so I'm not even close to full, but you can kind of already get an idea of how much stuff you can fit in here. Top shelf, middle shelf, all that space too. And there's still plenty of space to walk. We're headed to our first stop. Okay, hopefully this is recording. This van definitely takes some getting used to as far as all the tech and all the features and where all the buttons are. It's like, you feel like you should be hurtling along on this giant metal box and it doesn't really feel like that at all. Heated steering wheel is amazing. This little guy is cool. It's like the 360 view. So far, so good. Oh yeah, and when you hit park, cargo door opens. And then when you put it in drive, it closes. One thing I've noticed that's a little bit annoying. I don't think there's a way to open this from the inside. So you have to go into the screen. Maybe I'm missing something. This is a total game changer. This door right here. You're driving, you get up, get those packages and you're out the door and you're out the door. My phone actually synced. So instead of using this delivery device, I can just use this. Now I can use this or this, and I don't really even have to worry about using my phone. I can just put it right here. And that's a charger. I've had my personal phone on there. This is my work phone. It has a little bit thicker case. It doesn't work, but that's okay. I'll just charge my personal phone. It's crazy. All the alarms, like look, there's a person right there and it just let me know. Let's see how this thing does at parking illegally. Just kidding but not really. Hazards, put in a park, and there's no emergency brake, which is weird. It's just park is park. One interesting little fact. This is the key fob. There's only two buttons, but there's actually a secret hidden key just in case. So it goes right in the bottom and it just snaps in like that. You'd never even know. It's right there. This is awesome too. I really like this. Here are my stops for today. Here's my next one. If I press that, and then press start, there you go. And it pops up on this. It's a tiny bit slow to update and the zooming in and out is also a little bit slow. I guess that's just a software thing, so that could be fixed. Throughout the day, if it gets better, I'll let you know. I'm back here looking for my oversized packages. I forget who it's for. And right there, I can see the address. So before you'd have to pull out your phone, check your phone, you can just literally get out of the chair, come back here, take a look at the screen and you can see what the address is that you're looking for. So that's cool. I cannot for the life of me get this driver door to unlock. Like there's a button. I'll hit unlock on the fob. Oh, maybe it's just sticky. I don't know. That's weird. I think that's supposed to be a feature that you walk up to the door and then whichever door you walk up to, either the driver's side, passenger side, or the rear, it'll unlock automatically. Can't tell if that's working or not. Just noticed that. That's cool. Here are my stops on the app, but here are my stops on the van. So the numbers don't quite line up, which is weird. I don't know if my phone is being slow and it's not updating. Here's a very important test. Does the Rivian work for snacks? Yup, pass. One thing that's really crazy about these is the wheelbase. It's almost the entire vehicle. The step vans and the Ford Transits have a lot of van that hangs off at the very end. But these, it's literally just the wheels, the bumper, and that's it. I was waiting for this moment. Rivian truck. Rivian van. 
The shelving is nice, but it doesn't go quite as deep. It seems like they favored this aisle space instead of having deeper shelves. I just had to pull up so I wasn't as far in the bus area. Eee! It's not my fault, there's no parking spots around here. One feature I really like is this big old light bar that goes all the way around the back. I was driving on I-5 behind one and you can just instantly tell just from the light bar what it is. There's nothing else like it. One of the things everyone was so concerned about was that there would be a camera back here in the cargo area. There's nothing in there. I just realized, huh, I've been doing the cargo door all wrong this whole time. That makes a lot more sense. I was going into the menu, been right on the little options bar thing at the bottom this whole time. Just had my first person come up and ask me about the vans. I love it. If you're ever trapped in the cargo area, there's a little latch there. We're free. Nice. Space needle. I've been seeing this all day. I have no idea what it means. It's counting up. So I'm wondering if there was like a countdown to when this was supposed to be delivered. And then once it passed that, it started going up again. Just finished this part of my route. So I'm gonna point out a couple more interesting features on this van. This is where I sit all day. Window goes down. Window does not go down on that side. Steering wheel has a little Amazon right there. All of your info as far as what gear you're in. This has the little sensors. So when you're close to something, a little red line will show up. There's a big screen with the view. You can go like this if you want the view to be bigger. And then this is cool. This 360 view is way better than the step fans because I feel like the angle isn't as wide. It doesn't look all distorted. It's actually like proportional. All the heating options, heated steering wheel. Ooh, this stuff. Oh my God, we're gonna turn that down. There are defrost vents in the little window down there and also right here. So that's cool, it'll defrost all of these windows, which by the way, this windshield is absolutely massive. There's that cargo door button I was talking about earlier. Oh, oh it closes it too, oh wait. Oh yeah, it opens and closes it. That's cool. Seat heater, very nice. There's some menu here. Bulkhead door, see this is what I was doing before. I was going all the way into this menu. Anyways, way easier to just hit it right there. Haven't messed with that actually. Oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, did not know about that, that's cool. Oh, and look at that, 169 miles, nice. This I have yet to try, but Seems like a good idea in case you're stuck in the middle of the road. Side mirrors, if you want to adjust that. It tells you to adjust it on the steering wheel right here. It'll tell you right there too. I'm moving my finger up and down. See, up, down, left, right, left, right. Task light, that's like in the back, I think. Dome light, there we go. There's all sorts of other options. I don't even know what all those do, so I'm not even gonna begin going into that. And I'm gonna try this on my way home and play some music. And you can lock the screen if you don't want to accidentally bump something, but I haven't had any issues with that. There's this button that I have no idea what it does. It's a camera? Nothing happens when I press it, so I don't know. And then that right there, SOS. So there's an option on the delivery device to contact emergency services. But I think if you just hit this button, it'll connect you. Like if you're in a car accident or if you're having a medical emergency or something like that. And uh, it'll connect you directly to someone who can help. So that's cool. And obviously I'm not gonna press that and I haven't even opened the little cover, but good to know. Here's a door handle, press this and it unlocks the door and then you still have to like hold it and open it. Oh my gosh, like that. I've been having so much trouble with that today. There's also another latch right here. That works too. Camera, camera, Netrodyne camera, which has always been there. Oh, oh yeah, these uh, sun visors, imagine like a cafeteria tray times two. These things are huge. Dang. 
Oh my. Been driving all day and I still have 136 miles of range left. So what? I started at 144. So have I really only driven eight miles? Maybe. There's that fan that was making all that noise earlier. I haven't really looked much at the cargo door. This is definitely like aluminum or something. It's pretty solid. There's this little button over here. If you click it, it'll unlock. Oh. Oh, and it's actually rolling all the way up. It doesn't always do that. Maybe it's because I was on a hill, but I was hitting the button and it would kind of go halfway and then you'd have to pull it up. I'm on level ground right now and it worked fine. I should probably mention the colors going on in here. So you've probably noticed all of the prime blue accents. Yes, prime blue, that's what it's called on the Amazon branding site or whatever. And then there's this squid ink blue, which is the darker grayish blue that is on the outside. Also, I should mention I'm a tall boy and this fits me just right. So, oh, almost. But I haven't hit my head yet, so that's actually really nice. Nice. Here's another little quirk. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mirror, mirror. But do you notice anything? This mirror is on this pillar right here. That mirror is on the other pillar. You can still see it, because there's this window right here. Mm -hmm. They're different. Somebody please help me open this door. Headed to our next stop. Let's do this. FedEx, look at my cool van. <laughs> For this last little bit, I'm putting on the chest cam so you can see a little bit more of what the workflow is like. So I'm pressing start on my app and it just started right there. Hopefully you can see that. I was having some issues, like I said this morning, getting it all synced up, but it's working flawlessly now. I feel like the turning radius on this thing was like a little overhyped. It just seems like with all these roundabouts and stuff, I'm just doing the same thing that I'd have to do in a normal transit. I do not want to be the one to scratch this. Okay, we're good. Dude, I love it. That dude just said, oh, it's one of the Rivians. <laughs> you bet it is. Park. So it's parked. I don't have to do anything else. My packages that I need are right there. I'm gonna have to blur everything out, so bear with me, but got them already, good to go. Oh, forgot my phone. I still need this delivery app to scan everything and take a photo on delivery. Got you. There we go, easy. So, Updated on the screen now, which is cool. And then I'm gonna hit that to go back here. I'm gonna get my next few packages ready. Here are my next three, right up here on the shelf. Very nice. Put my phone down on the little shelf. Right there. Hit start. Drive. And there we go. Easy. Amazon. Thank you. Thanks. Nice. It's weird that the lights never turn off. I guess it's electric, so you don't need to worry about it running out of battery. There you go. You get the idea. A few more things that I've noticed. That step is pretty high off the ground, actually. It's a decent step up here and step up here before you're really in the cabin. I said earlier that the lights don't turn off. Well, when you lock it, when you lock it, oh, there we go. It makes that weird little noise, that boop boop. For reference, Nissan Leaf, Rivian. You could probably fit one of those in the cargo area. I still can't get over how cool this thing is. We've got ourselves an empty van, so you know what that means. Time to RTS. But first, one more thing on the outside of the van. So it's getting dark, er, it's not dark, but this is a good time to show off all the lighting going on on the outside here. Side marker, side, rear, top up there. The headlights are pretty iconic, of course. Brake lights. Then I want to try out this task light thing. Let's see if that changed anything. Oh, there you go. Nice. Headed back to station. 
Wow. One more thing to do. Test out the music. It definitely works. Like I said, it only goes up to 20 and it's not that loud and it's really not that good, but it's music. So I'll take it. There we go. Just like that, we're done with our day. Green light it means we're good to go. And just look how many more of these guys there are. First time in the Rivian van, I was so pumped to drive this thing. I actually saw one for the first time probably like two years ago when I first started working at Amazon. Our old station was where they kept the prototypes like super early on in like 2020 in this caged area with black tarps around it. You knew there was something in there, but you didn't know what. I remember coming into work one day and they must have been moving them or something because they were out of the cage and I was shook. It was so crazy seeing them back then and it's still crazy seeing them now. Before I end the video, there are a few things that I wanna mention. It sounds like there's gonna be three variations of the EDB. 700 is by far the most widespread. That's the one that we have at our station. That's the one that I drove. I know 500s exist, which are the smaller ones, but I've only seen them in pictures and I've heard a few stories about them. The 700 is just a reference to the size. So I think the number is actually closer to like 680 cubic feet in the cargo area. And then the 500 has 500. The 900 I think is closer to like 800 and something, but they just round up. One of the cool features that I didn't show in my video is the lane assist. So when I was doing my training, we were on the highway and my instructor said, slowly try to go over the white line and see what happens. I slowly went and sure enough, the van subtly corrected me back into my lane. So that's a really cool safety feature. There are other things like the headlights are supposed to be adaptive. So it'll turn on your brights when there's no oncoming cars. Another thing is the size. It looks closer to the Ford Transits, but it's actually quite a bit bigger, but not quite as big as our step vans. So it's somewhere in the middle. I think the driving experience is probably closer to the cargo vans. I also didn't go into too much detail about the one pedal driving, but that's another cool feature. And I've never driven an electric car before this. So that was totally new to me. There is a brake pedal. It's not like you only have one pedal, but you only need one pedal to drive because when you let off the gas, it comes to a stop, but it's kind of an abrupt stop. So it just takes some getting used to. I had a few minor issues getting my phone to connect to the van at first. I figured it out about an hour in and it didn't end up being a very big deal after that. The driver's side door, I could not, I still do not know how to open it. I promise you, I was hitting unlock and it wasn't opening. I was double tapping unlock, I was holding it. I was holding the fob up to the door handle to see if that would work. I did like a two hour training on this. There's still a lot of stuff that I don't know how to do. I'm sure once I drive it more, I'll get used to it. So before we go, let's answer the big question. Is the Rivian EDV better than the original Amazon vans? And just in case you're not familiar, right now we're using Ford Transits, Ram Pro Masters, and Mercedes Sprinters. We also have another variation of the Ford Transit that we call the CDV. That's basically a Ford Transit cutaway chassis upfitted with the box from a step van. It drives like a transit, but it has a lot more room. And then we also have the big step van. So how does the EDV compare? The biggest difference is that walkout door on the passenger side. When I'm driving a Ford Transit, I literally get out the driver's side door, go around, open the cargo door, get in again, look for my stuff, get out, close the door. So you can see when you're doing that 200 plus times a day, it gets old. To be able to just slide out of my seat, reach back behind me and walk out of the sliding door, huge. Saves so much time, so much easier on my body and my knees and all that good stuff. EDV, clearly better than the cargo vans. But we also have those step vans and I actually train for the step vans and so that's what I used to drive all the time. Those have a very comparable setup with a walkout door on the passenger side. So what makes the EDV different from the step van? The biggest and probably the most important difference is that the EDVs are under 10,000 pounds, which means you don't have to do any type of training or any type of certification with the Department of Transportation. Getting drivers DOT certified takes a lot of time and it costs a lot of money. So yeah, these vans probably cost what, 100 grand more a piece up front, but over their lifetime, I'm sure these vans are gonna end up saving Amazon a lot of money. Okay, that's it for this one. It's almost midnight. I'm trying to post my video before Doug DeMiro posts his. So um, 
I'm gonna get to editing. If you have any other questions about the EDV or delivering for Amazon or anything like that, leave me a comment or send me an email. I always love talking about that stuff. But uh, yeah, for now, I think that's it. So uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. That was awesome. I can't believe I got to drive one of those. That was sweet. All right, peace.